Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of our Paso Livo uh, Kitchen Cuisine. Uh, this time we are doing a virtual tasting for you. So what's exciting is uh, we're kind of changing it up. We are making it so that you, um, you're kind of running the show this time. You are asking the questions. This is your opportunity to really um, revisit all the questions that you got answered when you went to the tasting room and um, have forgotten since. So that's what I'm here for today. We've got two olive oils to taste, two balsamics to taste, one salt and one seasoning. So what we're going to be doing is playing with those and I'm gonna be talking you through tasting those as well as answering any and every olive oil question you can fire at me. So uh, welcome, it's great to have you. I'm Eleanor and uh, this is the Paso Livo bundle that you have probably picked up from online or one of our stores. So we have a downtown tasting room and we have our ranch and both of those locations have this bundle. Um, so if you're watching this after the fact, you can head down there and buy the bundle or get it shipped to you and re-watch this and retaste. Um, this is also a little sample um, of what we do when we do corporate virtual tastings or family virtual tastings. So if you're interested in doing that privately so you can pick your own bundle and um, kind of zoom in or do you know one of those um, kind of chat room type things so we can all sit, taste, and talk about the olive oil with uh, whether it's coworkers or family members all over the states. Uh, it's kind of nice to bring everybody together that way. So that is what we're doing today. And uh, we'll start off by talking about vessels to use to do the tasting. So if you've been to our tasting room, you know that we provide little slices of bread, a little uh, slice of baguette. That is a fantastic way to taste, but if you're gluten-free, we also have the gluten-free crackers. Um, you can also use lettuce, uh, veggies, or you can sip. So um, traditionally, if you want to uh, pretend to be a professional olive oil taster, uh, they would be using a cup like this. So this tasting cup is um, kind of blacked out, right? So it's, it's blue, so that you don't really see the color of it, of the olive oil. You're just getting the, the flavor, the sense of it. So you might see some cloudiness in olive oil and that affects it, but color really doesn't have much to do with it. So that's why it is blacked out, blued out. So this is the tasting cup that is used for competitions. The judges use it for competitions. And uh, see that beautiful shape that it has? That's going to make it so that you can cup the, cup the cup, cup the tasting cup with your bottom hand, and that's gonna provide some heat from your hand. And then cover it with your other hand and swirl. And then you're going to sip and do that aeration thing that sometimes you hear about for wines as well. But for olive oil, it's called strapaggio. It's an Italian word and it's going to, you're going to aerate it through your mouth so that you're getting um, all of those flavors hitting your palate uh, and you're really picking up on the nuances of the extra virgin olive oil. So if you want to uh, pretend to be fancy or be fancy, uh, that is how you would be doing that today. Um, the bundle, let's go over what the bundle looks like. The bundle, oh, and if you don't have one of these, because who does? Uh, a shot glass, a wine glass, a juice glass, all of those would work if you're going to be sipping versus dipping. And if you're dipping just um, a couple saucers, we're going to be doing a lot of mixing and playing and adding in. So bring a few saucers, anything like what you use to dip your soy sauce with your sushi, you can do that. Um, uh, little bowls, um, saucers, whatever you have in the house works out perfectly. Um, so set it all up. If you want to bring some wine and some cheese, go ahead. It's Friday. You earned it. I know you did. So you can bring all of that together for yourself for your tasting. Um, so in the bundle that you have in front of you, I'm telling you this, you have it in front of you, but I'm also telling the people who don't have it in front of them. I know. We've got to feel bad for them, right? Yeah. Uh, the Tuscan Extra Virgin Olive Oil. So best in show at the LA International Olive Oil Competition. That was international, Spain, Italy, Greece, best in show. When you taste it, you will absolutely understand why. Um, 
it's got all those beautiful nuances that you expect and, and want in an extra virgin olive oil. Really well balanced though, all at the same volume. So um, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of um, grassiness, a little bit of butter, but all so beautifully balanced in there. A big, bold, but balanced extra virgin olive oil. Great for steak, great for doing veggies. Um, the smoke point is 425, so you can cook really high with this too, so you don't have to worry about, this is just for salads and dipping. No, this can be for baking, this can be for grilling, this can be for uh, sauteing and deep frying. You can use this for everything, and that's the beauty of all of our stuff. Uh, once you hit a high quality, you're also going to hit a high smoke point. So um, you can look at your pantry, knock out, a ton of the oils that you have. I have veggie oil for baking and I have uh, avocado oil for high heat and I have an extra virgin for salad dressings. Knock everything out, grab a couple of these and you are good. You don't have to do the juggling anymore. So you're welcome. Uh, so we've got the Tuscan olive oil, we've got the basil olive oil, the sweetheart of our flavored taster uh, olive oil tasting. Um, and if you've tasted at our tasting room, you know why. And if you're cracking it open already and cheating, you know why. Uh, this is made by milling four to 500 pounds of fresh organic basil to one ton of olives. So you, when you taste it, it's like biting into a fresh basil leaf. It's gorgeous. So we've got the basil, we've got the sweet basil plum balsamic. These two are best friends. These two hang out a lot together. Uh, and the Tuscan balsamic. So the Tuscan goes with the Tuscan. I mean, they can mix and match, but uh, the Tuscan goes beautifully with the Tuscan olive oil. The um, uh, sweet basil plum balsamic goes beautifully with the basil olive oil. So everybody's friends here, but uh, if you're going to do be making a marinade or um, a salad dressing, those are the suggestions. Um, just pairing those two up. And this is perfect for tonight because if you're sitting there, you're like, I've had a hard, long week We've got a three-day weekend coming up. Woo! I just want to go easy for dinner tonight. This tasting can roll over to how you cook tonight. So there you go. You're set. Um, we'll be making salad dressings. We'll be making marinades. And uh, all you have to do is slice up some veggies or put some steak or chicken in there. Let it sit for a while and plop it on the grill. Done. Go pop open some wine. Put your feet up. You deserve it. Um, so for the seasonings, or the seasoning, that spicy Italian blend, oh I know, all of our club members are in love with this, um, actually who isn't, uh, this is one of those beautiful kind of combinations of everything that makes Italian food yummy, uh, in a jar. So uh, this guy and the basil olive oil together can do no wrong when it comes to pastas, when it comes to marinara sauce, uh, pizzas, focaccia bread, uh, of course, um, the caprese salads. This doesn't have any salt with it. So this is sodium free, which is really nice, the spicy Italian blend. And what's beautiful about that is that you can add in your own salt so that you're not, you know, it's, it's not guessed for you. So this is, our roasted garlic sea salt. Gorgeous, I pretty much put salt and garlic in everything that I do anyway, so this is kind of a shortcut cut for me. Uh, this is just a beautiful salt. Open it up if you've got it right now, smell it. You can smell that it's got that sweet roasted garlic scent to it. It's not um, just whack you upside the head garlic. It's that nice, sweet, roasted garlic, that, um, that, that garlic that you can spread on toast type. Yeah, that's that scent that you're getting from this. You're, my mouth's watering is yours. Uh, so that is what was in the bundle. So that's what you're opening up right now. And my suggestion is to start with the Tuscan. Whenever you come to the tasting room, the first things that we suggest tasting are the um, extra virgin olive oils. And then we get into the seasonings and the flavored olive oil. So we're gonna start off with uh, the Tuscan olive oil. Is there a question? There is. Can you tell us what is in the Italian seasoning? Absolutely. Not by memory, but guess what? <laughs> On the other side, it's right here. Um, oh, I also don't want to lie to you, so I'm going to read it out to you. Basil, parsley, hot and spicy oregano, thyme, sage, onion, garlic, chili peppers, sweet bell pepper. So the chili peppers are what 
uh, the spicy part of the Italian blend. We all know those, those are the type that you would get at the pizza places. Uh, so it hasn't got that much heat to it. I've been able to make marinara sauce with it and nobody in the family complains. So uh, it's definitely one of those that you can use across the board. You don't have to worry about the heat part of it. Oh, I will say that um, when this gets shipped, it sometimes settles. So give it a little shake before you open it up so we, um, everything kind of mixes around in there too, okay? So um, we've got that spicy Italian blend. That is what's in the blend. It's a gorgeous blend. It, um, it's all pulled together locally. Uh, we've got a couple sisters that pull all of our seasonings together, uh, whether they grow it here or responsibly source it from where they can. Um, their seasonings are fantastic and we're just in awe of them. So every seasoning that you taste from us is from them and is nice and fresh. And you're gonna get that freshness right off the bat. It's not going to be a seasoning that has been sitting in a warehouse and then on the aisle and then finally at the front of the aisle and then you get it because that seasoning is already gone, Meh, right? You cook with it and you're like, why is my cooking not great? It's not you. You're a fantastic cook, okay? We love you, you're a fantastic cook, you know this. It's your seasoning. Toss that seasoning, get some fresh stuff, okay? Okay, so open up your Tuscan extra virgin olive oil. So let's start with this guy. Um, pour it into whatever vessel you have figured out and do a smell, do a taste, uh, dip it, bread, whatever works for you, whatever you guys have got going on right now. Um, what you're going to be getting is a potential tickle in the back of the throat and that's a good thing. Oh, so if you need to run and get some water to cleanse your palate throughout this, go ahead and do that now. I'll wait. Okay, I think I gave you long enough. So uh, yeah, so you're going to possibly get that tickle in the back of the throat, and that is because we have uh, there are polyphenols in good extra virgin olive oil. You want polyphenols in your extra virgin olive oil because that is the healthy stuff. So polyphenols are micronutrients that are found in some plant-based food products and uh, extra virgin olive oil being one of them. Oleocanthal is the type of polyphenol that's in extra virgin olive oil. Um, if you look it up, you will see all of the health benefits that come from extra virgin olive oil and polyphenols and it's insane. Some of the studies that are coming out, I mean, we're, yeah, it, it, I don't wanna claim anything, but there are some fantastic studies coming out it is a good idea to have extra virgin olive oil in your life and uh, in your day-to-day -day regimen, whether it's taking a tablespoon in the morning, putting it in your smoothies like we saw last week, um, uh, putting it in your salads, doing a little bit of dipping. It's hot out, you don't wanna cook. Just pour some of this stuff, go outside, grab some wine, get some cheese and bread, and that's your dinner, right? And then you're taking care of your heart, you're taking care of your health, and eating gourmet. So. That Tuscan, uh, I've got the two different sizes, by the way. I've got the, the minis. Some people have ordered the minis to, to kind of check it out. Um, and then some people have gone and gotten the big ones. So that's why I'm surrounded by two different sizes, just FYI. So this is a 500 milliliter bottle and this is the 100 milliliter bottle. So uh, whichever one you've got, I, these are fantastic for doing family tastings and the, this type of tasting, I will say these are teasers. The minute you fall in love with them, they are gone. So um, you will probably be hopping on our website and ordering the big guy uh, because you realize that it's, it's it's gonna go. It's gonna go quickly because it's once it's in your hands, you wanna put it on everything. So that Tuscan olive oil, go ahead and taste it, smell it. Uh, recognize the fact that you were getting that butter, that pepper, that grassy on the tongue, all those nuances on the palate. Um, it is one that you will be able to pour and then pour maybe a little bit of that Tuscan balsamic. So why don't you open that up right now and wherever you have poured that Tuscan olive oil, also pour a little bit of the balsamic. So our balsamics and vinegars are, are created here in a Tascadero, so two towns over. So we try to stay as local as possible, as you can tell um, by all of my explanations here. The couple that make these vinegars and balsamics are fantastic. We love them. And they have an or a two acre organic farm, so they grow a lot of their stuff right there. Uh, they consider themselves renegade vinegar and balsamic makers. They are award winners in their own right. They are fantastic. So 
you're gonna taste this. This is uh, blackberry and oregano in this guy. And it's such a beautiful all around balsamic. So you're gonna dip and taste that balsamic with the Tuscan. Burp. These two together, just, there you go, you're done. Don't sign off though. I mean, it's so good, right? So don't, but stay with me. Uh, so those two together are beautiful. Um, both of the balsamics you can reduce down so it gets a little bit thicker, then put it on strawberries, on ice cream, um, drizzle it on salads, on pastas, on pizzas, like we saw with Broken Earth um, a few weeks ago. Broken Earth made pizzas and drizzled our balsamic um, as a reduction on the pizzas. I mean, yeah. So uh, definitely if you have been watching um, our shows every every Friday, then that means that you know what to do with all of these guys it's because we've got everything from smoothies to cocktails to pizzas to trout, everything. We've got, we've covered the, the bases. Um, so we're gonna move on to the basil. I know you've been waiting for that. Uh, so the basil can do no wrong. Uh, go ahead, pour, smell, taste, right off the bat, taste it by itself and then we're going to start playing with all of its friends. So the basil by itself, like biting into a fresh basil leaf, your head is gonna go straight to caprese salads probably, um, but it works. I mean, if you have a good homemade pasta, we have fantastic places around here that make their own pasta. Grab some homemade pasta or some fresh made pasta, cook it up, drizzle some uh, basil olive oil on it, put these guys on there, done. Maybe some Parmigiano Reggiano, but that's all you need. It's, it's all about high quality stuff. You don't need the quantity. You've got the quality. So you really get to, to honor the flavors and um, the craftsmanship of each product when you keep it high quality, but low quantity. So the basil by itself is fantastic, but pop open that spicy Italian blend if you haven't already and pour that in there or do a little dip. So dip into the oil and into, well, pour this into a little container so you're not putting oil in it. And then do some double dipping there. It's okay, you're at home, you can double dip all you want. So dip and dip and taste. It is, it's like a little mini pizza, right? Uh, if you involve that uh, roasted garlic sea salt as well, you have a full blown meal set up for you already. It's this gorgeous Italian meal. I do these three products and some uh, canned organic tomatoes and that's my marinara sauce. Super simple. If you look at some of the jars of marinara sauce in the store and turn it around and look at the sugar content, it is mind blowing. I don't understand how they manage to put that much sugar in. Um, all I can say is I'm not against sugar. I live, I am a sweet tooth, everybody knows that but don't hide it in my marinara. If I'm gonna have some sugar, I'm gonna have it in like creme brulee, a cheesecake. I don't want it hidden. Don't hide my, my sugar, put it where I can eat it. So make your own marinara sauce with this bundle right here, set, low sugar, really fresh, just gorgeous. Great for putting on pizzas, great for putting on pastas, uh, uh, meatballs, um, uh, lasagna, oh, so good. Okay, so you've started to play with all of these guys. Pop open that sweet basil plum and pour it in with the basil, uh, basil olive oil. So these two together. Again, just, I don't know if you guys have our dipping dishes at home, but we do have the Mary Judge dipping dishes. They are gorgeous. There's uh, four, three or four designs and um, First of all, you feel kind of professional because you now have an olive oil dipping dish. I know some of you are hopping on our website right now being like, what is she talking about? Um, go into our tasting rooms, ask for them because they're beautiful. They go in the dishwasher just fine. And what's nice about them is that they're terraced. So it, that means that you can pour olive oil, put some balsamic in there. The balsamic is gonna separate down to the bottom and the olive oil is gonna float on top. So you can dip down to have both of the flavors or dip to the side to just have the olive oil. You can put some seasoning and some salt in there, just perfect. And it looks really pretty too. So um, keep that in mind because all of this stuff is great for gifting too. I think a lot of you guys are club members by this point, but if you're not a club member, this is the type of stuff that you get 
two, three times a year, it's up to you. And um, you get to create your own little bundle and that is your shipment. So that or the Mary Judge dipping dealie that I just talked about, or uh, I, we've got plates, we've got tea towels, we've got soaps, we've got lotions, all of that is involved in a club shipment. It's whatever you choose. Uh, so definitely look into the club. If you're not a club member yet, I think I'm talking to a ton of club members right now, but um, if not, keep that in mind because um, gifting for yourself, gifting for others, right now is a time where we just really wanna think with the heart and make sure that we are taking care, this is great self-care stuff to take care of yourself, that you're eating healthy, but also shooting off these to, to, to gifts, you know, to, to people who you care about and letting them know hey, I, I haven't been able to see you in six months, but um, uh, I am think of you, thinking of you and I wanna make sure that you are keeping heart healthy as well. So that is uh, one of the pluses of the club membership is that you're getting a discount on all of this sort of stuff and um, make gifting a little easier too. So, um, so we've got this bundle going on. Are you guys enjoying it? Go ahead, hammer out any questions you have. If you have just a rogue extra virgin olive oil question, let me know. That's what I'm here for right now. Um, I'm going to kind of backtrack or go off a script, script a little bit. Uh, so we go through the California Olive Oil Council on what can be considered extra virgin olive oil. Uh, they say it has to be first pressed only, cold pressed only, and acidity level has to be 0.5 or lower. Uh, ours is usually around 0 0.05, give or take, and that is what leads to the high smoke point, uh, is that low acidity point. The low acidity is because we, uh, you guys have probably been here during harvest. If you haven't, tried to come. That's in November, and it's such a fantastic time to see how the magic happens, uh, see how your olive oil is born. It's pretty amazing. So you'd come to the ranch, you're surrounded by our olive trees. It's 45 acres of olive trees, uh, 12 different varieties of olives that we grow here on the property. And you go into the ranch, you can do a tasting, but also you can taste olive oil that was on the tree that morning. It, we move that quickly. So as you know, everything is grown here, pressed here, bottled here, released here, estate. Um, and that's what leads to one of the many things that leads to the quality level that you're tasting right now is the fact that everything is happening in house. Um, we're small batch. We're not, you know, sh uh, handing out vats to restaurants. We have got not a, I mean, 45 acres. So it's all going straight to you guys. This is what's happening. So, um, if you come during harvest, you get to see the magic happen. You get to taste that fresh extra virgin olive oil. We're extremely transparent, and that's something that you should really look into, making sure that your olive oil, um, the, the, where it's coming from, is very transparent about how they make it, where it's coming from, where it's pressed, where it's bottled, um, because there is uh, a lot going on there. Olive oil is one of the top most counterfeit food products out there, so you do really need to know um, where your olive oil is coming from, because you could be putting uh, soybean oil, canola oil, veggie oil in your body, thinking that you're doing something good for your body when you're not. Um, and it's not your fault, it's that uh, it's just this, it's, it's a huge um, counterfeit issue out there right now. Um, and that's why California is kind of honing in uh, so some of us growers are choosing to be regulated to make sure that you can hang your hat on the fact that this is the good stuff, the real stuff. Was there a question? There was. Um, someone wants to know about marinade ideas for meats because they have a filet that needs some friends. Oh, totally. Okay. So thank you for <laughs> reeling me in and getting me back on track. Yeah, the marinades. So the marinades and the salad dressings are the same thing, easy, um, because you can pair these guys up together. The reason I like this or, or those two as a marinade is because the minute that you add the acid from the balsamic or the vinegar um, to your olive oil, you have now created a meat tenderizer. So um, what I do, it's not too fancy, but what I do is put the mix into a Ziploc bag put in my skirt steak, my, my chicken, 
my portobello mushrooms and um, uh, peppers and onions. Put them all in there, seal it up, let it sit and marinate. Um, I would say for the meat, at least a couple hours. Uh, veggies don't need to marinate for, for too, too long, but they can, they can hang out. Um, uh, I go camping a lot, we go camping a lot, and this is something we do continuously because it's so simple. As long as you've kind of done the fajita style veggies and you've got some meat in there, stick it all in a Ziploc, let it sit, let it marinate, let it sink in there and tenderize the meat. And then after a couple hours, slap it on the grill or you know cook it up and you are set. Any of that, um, if you're doing veggies and you still have some of the marinade left over, use that to top the veggies, use that to top the steak. Um, you can also use the olive oil as a finishing oil. Uh, the seasonings can be put in beforehand or rubbed on or used for afterwards as well. So there are a ton of possibilities. A really good steak, if you've spent a ton of money on a good cut of meat, the last thing you wanna do is put $4 barbecue sauce on it. Okay, I think we're all in agreement, right? You've spent a ton on a piece of meat. You want to honor that piece of meat. You wanna get that flavor, you want to get the, that marbling. You really want to be able to recognize um, the quality level. So a good extra virgin olive oil, a good sea salt. That's it. That's it. And I think I'm talking, I'm preaching to the choir quite a bit because I do have a ton of people come in um, and say, oh my gosh, that's all I do is olive oil for steaks when I'm, when I'm grilling them. I do also have some very surprised faces when I bring it up too. So just in case you're one of the surprised faces, yes. Um, this is going to even out the char because it is a good fat all the way around the meat. That, um, that flame is going to lick that meat all at the same te temperature and get it all charred at the same way, right? All balanced. So it's perfect to do that way. And then rub with a little salt that is all you should need for a good steak. Slice that up, do some veggies with the rest of this stuff, done and done. Um, but if you want kind of, uh, if you've got kind of the fajita style meat, then bring in the balsamic and bring in uh, the different flavors and get them all tossed up and you know stir fry them, grill them, cook them up. Does, hopefully that answers your question. Another question, yes. Equal parts of extra virgin olive oil and vinegar for marinade? I always do 50-50, but again, okay, and across the board, this is always gonna be palate driven. So that's going to be each person is going to feel it out and figure it out for themselves down the line. So I would start out with 50-50 uh, whenever I do tastings and um, I'll bring out one of these big cups and do 50% olive oil, 50% balsamic, I'll put the, the fancy top on and shake it up. Or I have a little mini mason jar at home that I use for salad dressings. Shake it because you can leave it out and it can, it'll can it stay for about a week. So it's nice to just use on, on if you're cooking up veggies or if you're doing salads, it can just sit there. Um, shake it up, taste it. And it, it might work out best if you do a little one, taste it and see how it works out for you and then go from there. Some people like heavier balsamic, some people like heavier olive oil. Start with that 50-50 ratio. Uh, because you're going to be doing some grilling and because it is Friday, let's talk cocktails. Um, so balsamics, as you know, have been involved in uh, quite a few of our, our cocktails recently. So uh, this guy, for example, this, some rye, and some lemon juice shaken and poured over one of those fancy ball ice cubes is gorgeous. Um, you're getting that the sweetness from the balsamic, um, you're getting the balance of the fruits, and you are brightening it up with a little bit of lemon juice and some rye, whiskey, whatever's up your alley. Uh, definitely worth trying out. So, cocktails. Um, also, if you've been following us, you know that um, Oh, what was the name of it? It was, um, there was a cocktail that was made with the, uh, the basil just recently too, that was, um, oh, a gimlet, boom. It's floating around here, uh, too many gimlets. Uh, so this guy with the lime olive, or with um, some lime juice, I think it was gin, was it? 
and then this guy shaken up and poured over ice. There's a nice float of basil olive oil. The smell of basil olive oil with lime juice is just tasted and smelled like summer. So these guys can also be used in cocktails. I have never created a better segue in my life. Speaking of cocktails, I'm gonna high five myself for that one. Uh, next week, next week we are combining with Crowbar. So Crowbar is a local distillery and they are going to be um, working with our products to create two different cocktails, a Bloody Mary and a Mule. So, I know, they've, the Mule has got our tangerine olive oil, and so look, 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 look. Tangerine olive oil and the cilantro lime. So the cilantro lime is gonna be going into the uh, Bloody Mary, the tangerine is gonna be going into the Mule, and the smoky spice is going into the Bloody Mary as well. So they are going to be doing some cocktails for us next week. We all love cocktail time, don't think we don't. So um, this is the bundle that's happening for next week. Hop on our website, join us, make your own cocktail. You deserve it, it's gonna be a whole nother week before we get, it's a four day week though. That's another thing to celebrate. So um, that's gonna be the bundle for next week, okay guys? Any other questions before I'm gonna sign off soon? So I wanted to make sure I've covered all of your questions. Um, you guys are probably busy eating right now and enjoying all of the flavors that we have been combining today. Uh, but um, if you have any questions, email us, touch base with us. This goes onto our YouTube uh, page, so please follow our YouTube because then you get all of those recipes just at you whenever you need them. They're all right there. So go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then um, this will be on our Instagram and our Facebook. Uh, so you'll be able to follow along. If you want to do this tasting and didn't have the products today, then you'll be able to hop on, go buy the products, and then hop on at a later time and test this out with some friends before then you connect up with us and have your own virtual tasting. Was there another question out there? Yes, somebody would like to know what your drink recipe was with the rye whiskey again. Oh, totally. Okay. And... We decided it was two parts rye, one part lemon juice, and one part balsamic. So I've used the blackberry balsamic, I have used the sweet basil plum. Um, because this has blackberry in it, you could use this guy too. It has some oregano, so there's gonna be some, uh, some character to it too. So definitely play, um, because it is a gorgeous drink. Uh, it's a perfect kind of end of the day drink, and um, is going to wow people if you make it for somebody else because uh, although shrubs have been used in fancy cocktail bars for quite some time now, um, it's rare that we use them at home. So using vinegars and balsamics at home for mixers is kind of a new, at home is kind of a new thing, and it's really it's always just fun to to wow friends and um, family members when you come up with a new idea. It's also better for you, right? Because these are made organically, they're local. Um, so these guys versus uh, ready-made mixers blow, blow them out of the water. So this is a better idea, not only health-wise too. So you're it's a healthy cocktail, treat yourself. So yeah, so you're gonna do this and there's, um, because it's fermented, right? It's kind of got that kombucha nod, so that acidity that you're going to get is going to have that kind of nod to um, the acidity of a kombucha, especially if you're using vinegars versus balsamics. So, you guys are gonna have fun tonight. You are making some dinner, you're making some cocktails. Uh, I hope that I've answered all of your questions. If not, make sure that you're touching base with us. That's exactly what we're here for. We love seeing you, we love chatting to you. Please, if you do make that cocktail, if you do make that steak, which it sounds like you're going to, uh, take a picture of it, put it on Instagram, tag us, do the little app thing, Paso Livo. We would love to see what your creations are. It doesn't have to be fancy, we, we get it, we're all home cooks, um, but we love seeing what you guys are making with our stuff. So um, tag us, follow us, 
We're gonna see you next week for cocktails. So um, I'm super excited for that. I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Uh, it's been since April, so it's just been really nice to have you with us every week, 2 p.m. Fridays. Um, it, this is kind of a, a family, a community at this point now. So it was a pleasure. Take care of yourself, have a fantastic three day weekend, and we will see you next Friday at two, okay? Bye guys.